Welcome to this episode of Liberty Creek. On this episode, I'm gonna give you a walkthrough of the property and show you how the cabin build is coming along. just finished our third year of the build in July so let me show you how the property has developed when we first bought the property there was a big old wreck trailer here um, a travel trailer had them take that out of there we moved the garden this year have the little garden over here and it did produce a lot of tomatoes the driveway if you watched last year's video the driveway I had someone come and uh, pack the ground down, put gravel, fix the drainage, and it is so much better the driveway. And in the winter, I have someone plowing because we are part-time off-gridders, folks. So that means we come up here almost every weekend. It's about a two hour to two and a half hour drive from our home in Connecticut to Vermont, Southern Vermont. And this is exactly why we chose Vermont. As you see, Next weekend probably will be peak. And look how beautiful that is. And it's great up here. It's relaxing. And we love it. We come up here almost every weekend. We, we do some projects. And let me show you what's going on this year. What we got accomplished. Now we say we're part-time off-gridders because we have a normal home in Connecticut. We both have jobs still, we both work, but this cabin is off-grid. We have 16.5 acres. Um, I'm not gonna give much of a tour of the property. Pretty much I'm waiting, hopefully next year, we will slow down a little bit so I can work on the land. This year, you can't tell right now, but I actually have a nice, my own, there's an archery range. We hang uh, steel plates there. We have targets we hang up. So I have my own range. We call that Justice's Trail. That's where Justice, my dog, likes to go down every morning, take her morning walk. And uh, right over here next year, I would like to put a large shed. Put a large shed over here and I think I'm done building. I am not gonna build for a little while. Um, this is where my last three years of weekends have gone is building the cabin um we have a creek on the property creek goes straight through the property so from last year's tour of the cabin you can see the trees that i told you i was going to take down here and the trees that were were where the uh, outdoor kitchen stands those all been taken down i try not to remove too many trees I cleaned up in here all the little um, trees and bushes and stuff so we could see on the other side. We like it better that way. As you can see from last year's video, I completed the wraparound porch. I added a screen porch and I added the outdoor kitchen. The outdoor kitchen was not on my plans to do this year and that's why I am behind on certain things that I said I would get done last year fire pit was located over there now it's the the range and we moved it over here because Jennifer 
is always scared when it gets dark over there. It's pitch dark and she can't, we start hearing noises in the woods and she wants to go in. <laughs> so we moved it closer. And uh, let me show you what's going on here. We also painted, everything's been painted since last year's video. Um, the wraparound porch is completed, the roof's on it, the, the metal's on top of that. Starlink, we got Starlink. If you are a follower of our channel, you know there's absolutely nothing out here. Nothing. Um, when we first got the property four years ago, we lived in a little RV right here on the weekends, part-time off-gridders. And for that first year, we have Ryzen. You could get Sprint. Didn't matter what we got. No, no way to call to the outside for help if you needed it. There was no internet, there was VCRs, and you know, just reading books. So I wanted something a little bit different. So I discovered AT&T and T-Mobile are like the only things that work spotty out here. Um, there is no internet on the street at all. No way to get internet. Your phones, like I said, they're so spotty, it's hard to surf the web. So. We went to Elon and he hooked us up with Starlink and it works great. Now we can stream movies and this is a getaway. Everyone here is off grid. Oh, you're off grid? That means we're, you know, supposed to live like it's 1842. No, we don't. We're just not hooked up to any anything on the grid, okay? Um, everyone has a different definition for grid, on grid, off grid. Grid to us is we're not hooked up to electricity. We have zero zero bills from this property all right if you're catching a bill from a water bill or electrical bill or anything like that i guess you would be hooked up to the grid we're not the only bill i have is for starlink and we choose to do that we could cut that off any day so here's the outdoor kitchen it's 10 by 10 um i have like a build series for this you can see where i started and this is the first structure i built on just the little blocks and it came out real nice. It's 10 by 10. It's got pine on the walls. It's got waterproof flooring. It's got a granite uh, island top here. And, you know, gen decorated. It's got a lean to. It's got the windows up here are screened in. Within the next couple of weeks, I'll be putting uh, shutters on the two outdoor windows for the snow don't get in. And, I'll be closing this in for the winter. Um, that'll be happening. You'll see that. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Now turning our attention to the cabin. You can see everything got painted. It looks great. Cabins should be brown, folks. When I, I always think that cabins should be brown. <laughs> Take a walk around the cabin. Now the cabin is 24 by 24, the, the deck wraps around, this is 36, the side over there is 24, and this is probably, I don't know, uh, eight, 8 feet, it's only half over here. I'm uh, still in construction uh, of buildings, so there's, it's kind of a mess. I just drained this tank because it's getting cold at night, I don't want it to um, freeze. But this is my water source for anything I'm doing around the property. You know, mixing cement, watering the garden. I take it from here. Now if you come over here in the back, I know on the last year's video, I said I was going to put the green trim up, the metal. I never got around to it. That's on the list for next year. Also, I want to bring this porch out a little bit more and bring it this way a little bit. I didn't have the stairs. I know I said I was going to get these stairs on. That never happened. Um, but what did happen is I got my my uh, water to plumb into the cabin. So we don't have to bring up water for washing dishes or the shower. This is as far as I got. I just completed this a couple weeks ago. And I'm draining those as well. If I move up here full time. I will have to bury um, a water tank under the cabin and be able to skirt in the bottom and be able to have some heat 
um, in that crawl space so it doesn't freeze and we can have water throughout the uh, winter. Down there is the creek. I can always pump water from the creek. But here we have a rain catchment system. It comes down, goes into the leaf eater. It comes down. There's a ball in here. The water, the first flush system, it rinses every, all the junk off the roof. It collects in the first flush. The ball will rise and get trapped right here. And the clean water will be diverted. It'll come down. And it will empty into this first tank. There's a filter in here. It filters out the water. And then over here, as you can see, the tanks are hooked up to each other. And so they fill with equal value. And from here, this hose will eventually go to a, uh, the hose you see right here will eventually go to a pump. Um, and it'll pressurize the PEX to the hot water, instant hot water heater. And then that will be run to the shower and the sink. And that's how we'll have water in the cabin. The drinking water will still come up. I'll probably purchase a Berkeley soon, so just in case emergencies. I do have plumbing in the house, a great water system. I'll show you that really quickly. Again, go back to the videos. You'll see more detail, but the first drain is for the kitchen sink. There is a trap under the kitchen sink that comes down. The second is for the shower. There's a trap right there in the line and it comes down. And this is for the toilet. It's a ur urine only that goes directly down. This is if I want to add a sink someday in the bathroom. So it goes down. There's an elbow. There's a line that's under the ground here. And you can actually see the top of a Home Depot bucket. That is my gray water system. It's buried here. The water goes into the bucket. There's gravel on the bottom. There's another pipe that goes down here. It's buried even deeper. It goes into a second Home Depot bucket with gravel in it. And there is little holes on the bottom of that bucket and it drains into a graveled area and that is how my gray water system works on the cabin been running it for two years never backed up never clogs it works great now on the side of the cabin we have the screen in porch there is an episode showing you how i did all that i will go ahead and take you inside the uh porch now and show you what it's like So this is the porch and it's six feet wide, 24 feet long, but at the end, I think it's a uh, four foot little utility room I have at the end. I'll show you that in a moment. Right now I still have a lot of my, you know, construction stuff in here. I got my saw and some plywood and things like that. But hopefully by next spring, I'll have everything out of here. I'll have a futon because Folks, you know, if you're a follower of the channel, you know, bug season is Mother's Day to Father's Day. And the flies, fly season, there's black flies everywhere. It's really annoying to come up here and enjoy being outside. So you need that little escape coming to the screen and porch. And you can still be outside, enjoy the outside, and relax up here. All right, so this is the utility closet I have back here. Um, I'm still not sure how I'm going to use it either for the solar or whatever. So here's the little utility closet. I have a piece of roofing covering the window. There is a window in there. And this is where my power comes in from the generator. I wanted to make this insulated and put my, store my batteries and have it as a utility room. But I don't know. I may or I may not. Um, one of the reasons is I just borrowed my buddy's uh, solar generator. He has a smaller unit. Um, but all I had to do is I took my generator out of the shed there. And then I just 
placed his battery pack in there and hooked it up just like I would hook up my electrical or my generator and sure enough the cabin ran off of it for about 13 14 hours it was great not to hear the generator and then in the morning it'll start to charge the only thing that wouldn't work is I need a much bigger solar generator his generator would be too small for the cabin um, I was able to watch TV for about two hours a night use the lights as we usually do on and off during the night and also in the morning make coffee and everything like that but then the battery would have been completely dead you don't want to drain the battery to zero percent every time and then winter comes and it's five o'clock and you want to go in the cabin even earlier than what we're used to it wouldn't have enough juice to do what we do at the cabin and that is now we watch tv relax um or even if you're reading a book i know most of you here off grid automatically means you're in you know 1824 and you've got to read a book or just sit there and stare at the fireplace we don't do that we come up here my main thing is to be outside i love being outside i like going for hikes i like building i love doing things like that when nighttime comes i love being around the campfire that's what the off grid means to me oh you beat me in here once again all right folks this is the inside of the cabin for those of you that aren't subscribers you probably want to see every detail of it um i got two more videos from the previous years of the build i would jump back there if you want to see more in detail i think my second year i go through everything even decorations in detail of the cabin and uh so basically this year man not much happened not much happened at all inside and let me explain to you why i told you last year i want to put a uh, pine on the ceiling and i still want to i started there's a piece up there um uh, my my first attempt i made my first row so i'm in a lot of trouble i realized i gotta go ahead and close in the end first and i just got frustrated so and then our projects start picking up and i think i'm gonna do tongue and groove i tried ship lap i didn't like how it was coming out um so that will eventually get covered up i for some reason i'm just avoiding it it looks like it's going to be a headache and you know that's what happened there um this probably within the next couple weekends i'll be trying to get insulation up there because that will really help out in the winter i will also be trying to put in a uh, propane wall unit just to help you know just to help the initial warm-up of the cabin but we get up here and it's two degrees and it takes about an hour to get up to like 30 degrees or you know or even more and we'll have that thing piping hot but it is cold the first couple of hours especially you get up here in the dark and you're outside shoveling you come in here and you're just like Phew. and i think a wall unit will heat the cabin up a little faster yes you're depending on propane but if I ran out of propane, it's not the end of the world. We've been doing it for three years. You just got to wait. Um, so that's what happened to see on the floor. The floor, we're debating and debating and debating. We we haven't made up our mind. We, we want to do, we're not doing natural wood because my floor here is a little too on level for just putting down some like we wanted the really uh, wide uh, like pine boards it would be too much to level out the floor and I'm not putting all that time or money into it. So basically right now I did find some flooring that I put in the uh, kitchen that was easy and it goes with the floor to lay down. It's waterproof. It's tight. It's a, uh, you know, um, watertight, but now Jennifer is thinking about putting rug down on this side, the living room side and on this side have the waterproof flooring. Will we do it? Hopefully, it'll probably happen this winter. And also, we'll probably put another uh, block of tile here just so when people come in, they're not standing on the rug, getting their feet all dirty. If I ever get steps on the back porch, I'll be able to come in and hit the tile over there. So, only thing I know, I think the last walkthrough, I was complaining that I couldn't find these hooks. I did find them, the shiny ones. It cost me like 30 bucks on eBay. But I got them. She's she's even got more um, hooks.
books and pots up there now. Uh, I think everything's been the same. We, we just had a couple friends over. We have four mattresses up there. Everyone slept. My buddy says the best sleep he had in over two years. Um, decoration wise, everything's pretty much the same. Pops just gave me this. And uh, this is just a replica. It's not a real gun, everybody. It's just a replica. And I think it looks cool. And also, we found this. We got the little black powder horn. And we, we found this little wagon. I love that wagon. I can't get over it. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it. You come in here. Again, this is for the viewers that just ran across my video here. This is our bedroom. And, um, yeah, nothing changed at all in here. Absolutely nothing. Maybe, maybe the sign, the picture, I, I don't know. But this bedroom is almost completed. I just got to do a little trim around the doorway. But everything's completed in the bedroom. The bathroom. I believe the last one, the bathroom was completed as well. Um, I got a little light and then we've taken a shower. I got the big light. It's got a much bigger than what we had when we had our RV the first year on the property. And it works great. Right now, the water storage tanks are not plumped in. But next year, I'll have a, uh, <clears throat> a head right here coming out, uh, a shower head. And that will run off of the uh, water tanks outside so endless sh hot showers it would be great because right now all we do is get, we have that bucket heat it up on the stove bring it in drop this little pump in and the water comes out of the shower head but it works it's all part of a uh, your off-grid fun living and we're trying to make it as uh, comfortable as possible when we're up here I already explained the toilet basically it's an RV toilet you can urine, urine only, um, go use the outhouse if you have to go do something else. You can actually use um, uh, like wag bags, we call them. Um, it's a bag, you go ahead and you put, yeah, commode liner bags. If you really had to go in the house and it's like two degrees outside, I know some of you people are hard as nails and you'll walk a mile to the outhouse and do it in the cold and all that stuff. But, here, we could just drop one of these inside there, do your business, tie it up, put in the whole depot bucket in the back, um, on the back porch. That's one way of doing it as well. So we try to make things very convenient and I don't mind doing that. All right, folks, so you know the cabin is 24 by 24. I'm gonna throw up a, a floor layout for you. Once again, I just want to give you a quick walkthrough of the cabin and some of the property and get you updated on what we did since the last update. This is going into our fourth year of the build. Things slowed down the COVID year, but we, we keep going at it. You, you can't just dream about it. You got to do it. You got to make it reality. Sitting on the couch saying, I want to go ahead and build a cabin in the woods. That's great. Start saving up for it. You have to have money too. That's another thing. Oh, I'm gonna live off grid. Well, go shut your power off in your breaker box right now, you're off grid. If you wanna come out to the woods and live off grid or just come out to the woods and build something hooked up, hook up to the grid, you just gotta start thinking about it, start making plans, start doing it, start living your dream. And Jen and I did it. We had an option. My pickup truck, for my viewers know, it's on its last leg. It's got like 240,000 miles, but it was either, let's see, let me get a $75,000 pickup truck. As soon as I pull it off the lot, it devalues by at least 10 grand. Or should I invest in buying a piece of property, building a cabin on it, saving a lot of money doing it myself, and then I have this forever, and all I have to do is pay taxes on it. Or do I have a nice truck for the next 10, 12, 13 years before it starts to rust and give me problems and then I trade it in or I sell it. And the option was we did this. And now we're halfway through our loan and I still haven't spent $75,000 on the property of 16.5 acres and everything you just uh, I just showed you that I built. I'm still not at 75 grand, folks. So this is, was win-win for us. Someday, hopefully I'll pass it on to my kids or someday I might sell it and make out like a bandit. I don't know, but get off the couch, stop thinking about it, start doing it. 
and start planning. Planning. You can do it. If I could do it, you could do it. All right, folks, that's the end of this year's walkthrough. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a quick one. Go back, watch the other videos if you just ran across this video and you're saying, hmm, how did this guy do it? Go look at the videos. Hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. Hit that notification bell. Thanks for coming to watch. I will see you all in the next one. Peace.